House Republicans making a big push in recent weeks to sell voters on their post midterm plans. They call it commitment to America. But is it catching on? Joining us now, House Republican Whip Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Congressman, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Morning, Shannon. Great to be with you. Okay, let's start here. Democrats are pointing to your own documents to tell Americans that you are preparing to cut entitlements. Here's what the headline is. House GOP decides slashing is the new saving. This year's Republican Study Committee's fiscal year 2023 budget openly calls for slashing and privatizing Social Security, raising the retirement age to 70 and ending Medicare as we know it. Now, I got a tweet from a viewer this week who says he's a Republican. He's very worried about you cutting his Medicare. Uh, he says it's a deal breaker and a betrayal by the GOP. So what's your answer? Well, the answer is that's a typical red herring by Democrats, and it's not something we proposed. In fact, we proposed strengthening and shoring up Medicare and Social Security, which are both, by the way, headed for bankruptcy if we do nothing. Democrats want to make that worse. Democrats actually recently passed a bill to raid money out of Social Security. Uh, so instead of making those programs less stable, what we want to do is shore them up. And by the way, one of the ways you shore them up is get more people back to work paying into those programs right now. And one of the things Democrats did on day one when they came in, taking over the House, Senate, and the White House, is to start paying people not to work, uh, to see more of the welfare programs where you used to have work requirements in place to, so that you'd have a real safety net, which we believe in. But why should we be paying people to sit at home when there are companies everywhere looking for workers? Everywhere you go, you go to a restaurant, you're waiting an hour for a table, and you're seeing a third of them empty because the government started paying people not to work. That drains programs like Social Security and Medicare. So let's strengthen those programs and stop them from going bankrupt. Uh, and let's also, be, by the way, stop the government getting in this business of paying people not to work when everybody's looking for workers right now. But, but fair to say that pointing to your own documents, there are some changes to those programs that would happen. There's not anything that we propose in the commitment to America. In fact, in the commitment to in America, the year we the, talk specifically about to. the fiscal year. No, in, the, in the commitment budget. to America, we talk. Well, they didn't do a budget this year. You know, if you look at what they've done, they've passed bills to increase taxes. I know your previous guest, Mr. Bernstein, talked about a bill they just passed to raise over $730 billion in new taxes. Uh, and by the way, more than double the size of the IRS. Uh, sending 87,000 IRS agents after hardworking families. And in fact, even the Joint Committee on Taxation confirmed they're going to be going after people making less than $200,000 a year, which is a violation of the White House's okay. own promise. But, but President to, Biden said he wouldn't do that. Just We're to be shoring clear, up. Just to be yeah, clear, we the, want to shore the up Republican Social Security Study and Medicare. Committee's budget. So that's something you've signed on to. That's what Democrats are pointing to to say there will be changes to these programs if, if your budget Well, first of all, that, yeah. That budget talks about shoring up and strengthening Social Security. That's not cutting Social Security. That's making sure for people that are on Social Security today, if nothing happens, there would be automatic cuts in law. We don't want that to happen. And so we've brought forward legislation to stave off cuts to Medicare. We want to stave off cuts to Social Security. Democrats haven't supported any of that. They want the programs to go bankrupt. Uh, that's not a good thing. We don't want Medicare and Social Security to go bust like the Democrats right now have us on a track to do. Okay, let's talk about some polling. Um, these are some interesting new numbers just out this morning when we asked people about uh, who they preferred as a congressional candidate. Uh, there is a three-point advantage there to Democrats. And when asked about how they felt about the House Republicans' commitment to America, a majority of them said that they were totally unfamiliar with the program. Do Republicans have a messaging problem in the midterms? In fact, we just rolled this out, and I've been to a lot of districts in the last few weeks since we rolled it out in Pittsburgh, and I tell you what, people are responding very positive to it. Number one, we've got phenomenal candidates, and we're going to win races in a lot of places you haven't seen. I was in the Northwest, uh, Washington State, Oregon, where we're going to flip seats. I was a few weeks ago on the Northeast, up in Maine, all the way down to Florida, where on the Eastern Seaboard, we're going to be flipping a lot of seats from Democrat to Republican. And you know what they tell me, Shannon? They are 
furious with Biden and Pelosi's far left socialist agenda that's led to increased spending, increased inflation, just the cost of everything you buy when you go to the grocery store, if you can even afford to put gas in your car when you get there. And look, the White House and uh, Jared Bernstein just before me, uh, they're, they're talking, bragging as if gas prices are lower. Gas prices are about 60 percent higher today than when Joe Biden took office and he shut off American energy production. That's why it happened. He's allowed OPEC, foreign countries. He's begged, Biden's begged Russia. He's begged Iran, Venezuela, and other countries to produce oil when we should be producing it in America. We do it cleaner than anywhere else. And by the way, if we produce more energy in America, we'd be lowering energy costs like we had two years ago. People are furious about all that, but they're also furious about rising crime because Democrats embrace not only the defund the police movement, one of the craziest ideas I've ever heard, but now they're going to cashless bail, letting criminals out on the streets after they've committed violent crimes against families. And that's one of the reasons crime's out of control, and people are furious about okay. that, too. Let's and so they want to check and balance on this far-left agenda. Okay, so let's talk about the crime issue, because that is one of the areas that polling shows us that voters give Republicans a distinct advantage. They think that you are better equipped to handle that. Um, but critics say that you're scaremongering about what's actually happening. They say some of these ads from Republicans on the issue of crime um, have racial undertones. Here's something from The Washington Post, an opinion piece. It says, violent crime is not soaring. In fact, it might be declining. Most violent crime is committed by white people, and violent crime is generally worse in Republican-run states. Your response? Well, first of all, violent crime is out of control in most big cities, and that's what we have been focusing on. So I guess they're admitting that their policies have failed. But it's the Democrats who started this about two years ago when they embraced the defund the police movement. And I think, by the way, voters on all spectrums, whether you're Republican, Democrat, black, white, doesn't matter, you don't want to defund the police. Criminals want to defund the police, but that's who the Democrats sided with. And then when they found out the public really hated that idea, they started going to this cashless bail where you literally just have some DAs and prosecutors and communities letting criminals walk out on the streets right after committing violent crimes. I mean, we saw it in New York. You know, Lee Zeldin, our great candidate for governor, somebody tried to take his life uh, on the stage at a, at a political rally, and the guy was let out the next day. Uh, that's what's going on that people are furious about, and it's why it's a major issue in a lot of these races, and Democrats won't walk away from their defund the police and their cashless bill uh, approach that has failed so many cities across America. You know the words they use to describe your agenda. They call it extreme MAGA agenda. This is what Speaker Pelosi says about the issue of abortion. She says 166 House Republicans, including GOP Whip Scalise, have co-sponsored a Life Begins at Conception bill that would criminalize all abortion after the moment of fertilization with absolutely no exceptions for rape, incest, or the health of the woman. That position does not pull well with voters, so how do you defend it? Well, I'm not a co-sponsor of that bill. The bill I'm a co-sponsor of is the Born Alive Act, which says that if a baby's born alive outside the womb, you can't murder that baby and call it abortion, which, by the way, that's legal right now in states like New York. Uh, there are states where they still would allow you to kill the baby after it's born alive. And I think most Americans, including people who identify as pro-choice, think that's radically extreme, don't want that to be the case yet. That's where Democrats are right now. And by the way, they also want those abortions paid for by taxpayers, which is also an extreme position. So they're the ones extreme on this. Uh, they keep trying to talk about it. It's backfiring on them. And by the way, people are talking about high cost of everything. They're not, uh, they're not looking at the Democrats' agenda saying they want more of it. They're saying they're fed up with the far left shift that both Biden and Pelosi have taken us, not down a liberal road, but down a socialist road. That's okay. what people are rejecting. I want to and be, that's what we're proposing an alternative to with the Commitment to America. I want to be America. clear, though. Did you sign on to, as a co-sponsor, Life Begins at Conception, that act? Did the Speaker's that, office no, get I'm that on the Born Alive. I'm on the Born Alive Act. Okay. I want to... Go look up the Born Alive Act. Again, it says if a baby's born alive outside the womb, mm -hmm. you can't murder that baby and call it abortion. Not a single Democrat in Washington supports that bill. That's how radical they are. Okay. Uh, and so that's, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. All right, Congressman, I want to be sure to ask, if we are more than five years out now from a shooting by a gunman. A list of lawmakers clearly had a very political viewpoint for why he came after you and your colleagues at that uh, congressional baseball uh, practice. How are you doing five years later, and how worried are you about heated political rhetoric, whether it's on the left or the right? 
Yeah, Shannon, I appreciate that. I, uh, I continue to get better. I still do physical therapy once a week. And uh, look, I'm, I'm lucky to be alive. Uh, heroes saved my life. Police saved my life that were there that day. Uh, Brad Winstrup, my colleague, uh, saved my life. So there's a lot of heroes that were involved in, in me being alive. And, you know, look, we always speak out against political violence. There's no place for it. Uh, this is the United States of America. And one of our strengths is that we can disagree and we don't uh, the other side isn't the demon or the enemy if they're uh, having a different viewpoint. Uh, you know, you try to debate, you try to go make your case and, and ultimately persuade people to your side. But political violence is never an answer to resolve our disputes. Well, Congressman, uh, we know there are a lot of weighty problems to tackle on the Hill, and we uh, hope and pray that the two sides can find some common ground. Thank you very much for your time this morning. God bless. Thanks, Shannon. You too.